hey, I've learned Flutter and it's amazing. The developer experience is so, so much better and hot reload and seeing your UI just change in a second is amazing. Now I'm just wondering what state management I should learn to implement in my app. Did you just say state management? Well, I think get management is pretty good. I don't know about you guys, but Redux is pretty good. It's being used in React or React Native, and I think Redux should be good for Flutter. Have you heard of Block? Block? Have you heard of Block? Block is pretty good. Block. Have you heard of Mobex? Mobex is pretty good too. Mobex. Um, so what state management I should I just I'm just asking for one state management. Oh my god. Why is that so many? Were you in that situation where you wanted to learn more about flutter and state management was the next step and then you've been bombarded with all of this state management like chill man So I'm going to discuss what actually is state management and what is state really means So I got inspired by this reddit article or reddit post where somebody posted gets the package that every flutter developer should know best state management ever and he shares about or he or she shares about how get is very very good for those who don't know what is a get well it's another state management that another person created for flutter and you could see that how the person quote that get will save hours of development and will extract the maximum performance Ooh, yep that's what all state management does and i really like how someone state down all the different state management approaches that have been created in the flutter ecosystem there's so many and then people are just getting confused on which state management you're supposed to create and the thing is i think i myself have read an article about what state management is in Flutter. So there's this amazing article that's called Understanding State Management and Why You Never Will by Matt Carroll. Matt Carroll over here. So he used to be a ex-Flutter developer in Google and he really has a very good point on why you should never understand what state management is so the first question is what is state if uh, i were to ask you guys or if the author of this article matt carell asked 100 developers what state means right no matter what frameworks you will probably end up with the answers uh, data variables in a stateful widget variables in the entire application a store like redux or flux store and his answer is the behavior of the app at a given moment in time. If you want to care about my answer, I think state is just very close to what a behavior or I would say a data at a given moment of time, you know? So yeah, that's his definition. I don't know which definition is correct, honestly. And let's go to the next one then. What is state management? The thing is, nobody asked about this question, but a lot of people will give you the answer of what the best state management is. I have an answer for that second question, but I never really have been asked about what is state management. So for him, if you were to ask another 100 developers what state management is, it is uh, like Redux, Flux, or Blog, and then <laughs> there's always some developers who list example thinking that it defines the concept. Well, um, yeah, you got this person, Nira Taro, right? So, and then how data gets into or out of the store, how information flows through the system, how business logic interacts with the UI, databases, hexagonal architecture. Who knows? This is my definition. So for me, it really opened up my eyes on what is actually state management. Even though I have been working and coding in Flutter for two years also, uh, in professionally or as a hobbyist or even now, I really didn't know what actually state management is. I think it's a whole bunch of all of this definition combined. Maybe not Redux because I've never used Redux, but I've used blog before so there isn't an actual actual definition in terms of his opinion 
for me, I think state management is basically how data is being passed around through the widgets, whether it's being stored or not. But who knows? I don't know. You know, there isn't any definition. It is confusing because it combines so many concepts together in this state management thing. We actually shouldn't give the answer of what is the best state management. So what he says is that if you found yourself asking how to manage state and you're unhappy with the response, it's because no one really knows what you mean. Which I agree because a lot of people think that, oh, this state management is good, oh, Redux is good, oh, Block is good, oh, whatever, right? But actually, the whole premise of a state management or I would say a solution is to solve a specific problem problem so there's a lot of problems or things that you want to solve for example if you want a network call and cache the result then ask that question if you want a centralized redux style store within your app of a state management ask that if you want to have a hydration in your flutter widget hierarchy with information ask that so other than asking what state management you should go through ask what is the specific problem that you want to solve like for example if i were to have a to-do app like everybody else is trying to do get it then what you should ask is that how you're going to have your to-do in different multiple devices with the same account then the state management that you're supposed to do is a simple file store instance or firestore database that can be called in different devices with firebase authentication using a user id and that's simple is that considered state management i don't know but that's sure a solution or one of many solutions that you can use in your flutter to do app so do you get the premise of what i'm trying to say and what he's trying to say so ask the proper question not ask what state management you're supposed to use in every app that you're going to build because every app is going to be different there's different use cases different user flows and onboarding process and whatever kind of thing so there is always a different solution to a different use case or problem Remember that you're building something for your company, your product, and your customers. The business rules and relationships with your product, company, and industry are far more important than whether or not you force a Redux store in your app, which I totally agree and have experienced before. So I was working in a startup and we were still not sure on the state management that we have. So one of uh, the developers say, oh, we should implement Redux. Then I I say oh we should implement block and the thing is there's no right and wrong answer we know that we probably need to use firestore as our database but how are we going to manage our different data in our different screens we come to realize that from what we've seen so far set state isn't a very good state management or a way for us to show the data and manipulate the data at a specific screen of the app but instead we use block because it can handle more complicated business logic and at the same time it can handle different ui and things and numbers and whatever in a specific app screen so it is really up to what your problem is is it the best solution i think for that time it is if it were to be in a redux will it be the best solution i don't know so people who comes from a react native background they usually use redux and then after that they try to push it in different apps if they were to go to the flutter ecosystem which i'm not saying is good or bad it's just saying that we should be open to solutions and find the specific solution to the specific problem that we are facing so we finally agreed that block should be the one but like i say this is something that you should actually explore and see whether the state management actually is good so now the question is that how can we get an info into this widget tree and how can we get events out of the tree so fortunately flutter provide us some tools in order to resolve those 
two very very fundamental problems that a developer is trying to you know create so first flutter has tools out of the box if you were to have realized and i think most of you guys have not heard of inherited widget if you do high five man it was really hard to understand what inherited widget was so inherited widget is just a widget that hydrates the widget tree so it basically holds data or it gets the data and holds it lah. so for example there is the theme dot of context so if you were to have a custom theme data at your material app right then you can call the theme dot of context in order for you to call the actual inherited widget of the theme data from your material app so your material app is at the top of your widget tree for example if you have a button at the bottom of your widget tree then you can use theme dot of context to refer to your ancestor which is your material app same goes to your navigator of context so these are the different examples of inherited widgets that have already been created inside the flutter ui toolkit i really don't want to say the framework but it's yeah it's called the toolkit yep and then the second thing is that if you want to create your own inherited widget you can but it's very very cumbersome or i would say very boiler platey so it is a wrapper around inherited widget to make it easier to use and more reusable so instead of creating your inherited widget you can create a class or object and then you can use provider to pass down to the different widget tree so if you were to do that in inherited widget it is a lot of boilerplate which i have gone through as a developer myself and it's really a pain in the ass but it's good to learn you know the basics of what an inherited widget is so you have inherited model which i haven't used before it's another flavor of inherited widget but i guess it is going to rebuild when a particular aspect of the data is being updated so this is just a performance optimization for those who have used provider and have used this thing called uh, selector or consumer it is around the same so it's just to optimize whether you should rebuild the whole widget or just part of the widget that you are listening to and then lastly you have stream builder i think a lot of you guys have used stream builder with firestore and stream builder it is just another widget that rebuilds itself every time the object that's being received is updated in the stream so in its essence right on how a ui changes is that it registers a user input with a callback so for example a user press on the button then you will activate the callback or the function and then a callback or function is being invoked or activated then it retrieves an instance of a regular dart object that's part of your application behavior so whether it is from firestore or whether it is from your inherited widget or provider and then it calls the method or the object that you want to run a response to the user input so for example if you want to save a button on a to-do app right then it will collect all the data into a nicely formatted json or i would say map and then it will send through firestore or you could say that you want to change the name of your username locally in your phone so you will take the text of the username and then it will change through your local db for example your storage or whatever right so let's learn why redux and blog exist so redux is a little bit complicated if you really don't know what redux is and the thing is redux was initially nothing more than a way to implement time travel in javascript so why is redux being implemented in flutter is because people from react native background who tries flutter and loved it would love to use the redux concept into the current flutter framework because familiarity is better than the unknown so they don't want to learn another framework it is just a normal human behavior to just use what is familiar to them and then another state management is block which i have used personally and it was promoted during the google io and a lot of people then think that and block is supposed to be the go-to state management for flutter so honestly what matt corral says is that when you're truly comfortable with moving information into and out of the flutter widget tree this question will become boring and mostly irrelevant you wonder why you ever asked it which i personally agree so when i create like flutter web apps in my course right i don't really use redux or block because 
honestly, I just use what is needed for me to build a very simple app. You know, for example, a portfolio website, which I have a Unimic course link in the description is that I didn't use Redux or Block. You know, I don't use like hexagonal architecture. I use Trim Builder for my RSS feed of my medium blog. That's about it. The rest is just static information that I hard coded it. I don't need to use Redux. I don't need to use block because I'm not listening to users input or users feedback. It is just more towards what I'm trying to show. And that's just one use case. So in summary, if you're a beginner who's trying to learn state management, that is a stupid question. Even though you don't know that's a stupid question, it is a stupid question. Well, the proper question is that what is the problem you're trying to resolve? So if you are trying to build a to-do app, so what is the problem that you're trying to resolve? You're trying to showcase the different data in your Firestore on your to-do app. So that means you just need a stream builder with a Firestore instance. And I think that's about it. Maybe you just need to handle the different data that you're updating. But I would say from my experience, just using Firestore update, delete and add with a stream builder, it's good enough. Maybe you need to know how to handle the different connection state, but that doesn't require all of this big architecture. If you were to have a big, big app, then having this architecture will help. However, if you want to learn for fun in terms of state management, I would say the same thing because by having to solve your own problem, for example, how am I going to update my to-do app on the spot? This will actually make you go through different stages of problem solving, which is very, very helpful if you want to get a job because the job requires you to solve problems on the specific business problem they are trying to resolve. Having to learn one state management and thinking that that state management is the best for all cases, I think that's stupid. So that's about me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of this video, subscribe down below. So comment down on what state management you want me to go through. Block, Redux, Get, whatever, you know, because I want to <laughs> learn on the different use cases of this different state management. So that's it. Stay safe and all the best. Bye. Bye. The lighting is good, baby.